three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times we turn to hate, do it all the time. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times they bring the shade when we bring the light. Like whoa, yeah, they on the low. That is what I know. Spiritual, even demons speaking label Christ the go. That's a quote, cause you better know. Time for missing tone, there's a tone, man. Save your soul. One, two, three, four. Now really been feeling your energy. We tell the truth and we your enemy. Some hopper and hatred and kin to a friend of me. Finically flip to a friend of me. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. We teaching our people identity. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You hating you murdering mentally. Yeah. Whoa, Bible told you there be what's up in the mix that we gotta go through. Twelve tribes to represent, teaching seal the souls too. We gon' let the hate vent, turn the heat up on you. Yeah, you ain't living right, you ain't got haters. What you made of yeah. You ain't living right, you ain't got haters, haters. They the greatest, but we gotta show them credit Like one, one two, two, three, four, four five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. nine Times we curve the hate, do it all the time Like one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, nine. nine Times they bring the shade when we bring the light Like check, I will keep in check Be about respect, that's a bet Judgment coming, don't take a seat on that Cut the check, that's a female case Watch the way we move and break commandments in your neck. I repeat, I'm a better man. I done dead it, dead it, matter of fact. Sing got pretty that the kingdom on the map. Michael Jackson, we beat again. Lift it like a jack. Jerry ain't gonna take us back. Go back on back, go back on that. Mm. Get us in the middle of a jazz and tittle. Twists are hitting like fiddles if you're dead in the middle. Proper sun pale when I caught in the middle. Coverage just can't make a feel like a boss in the rental. Proper running that like both flat. We back both with the Bible, both flats. All captains bring it out and go in. No cap in the hat. We back in. Mm. You ain't living right. You ain't got haters. haters. Spread the light. Show what you made of. Why you always gotta do the most? 
Cause there's a lot of souls that are losing hope. Don't do it for the gram, do it for your folk. They say we go in here and we don't do the poke. Oh no, Christ the goat. Oh no, do the poke. Christ the end and never go. Ayo, they done seen the ghost. Oh no, we the chosen. No, stand in bold. Drop it, yo, get caught in that. Go ahead, let them go. One four, 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 the one, two tribes, yeah. One Christ, one God, one spirit, one mind, yeah. Seven angels, trumpets, and vows, yeah. Let me count, yeah. Something bad in the mist, in the mist. Got a sip from the drink in the mix, in the mix. In my bag, pull a script, pull a script. Let it go on the track. That's a hit, that's a hit. Pull a script, pull a script. From the hip, from the hip. Clean the belt, clean the belt. That's a hit, that's a hit. Pull a script, pull a script. From the hip, from the hip. Clean the belt, clean the belt. That's a hit. Fist, Jerusalem. Check, check, check. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, the Lord God of the Hispanics. The so-called Negroes that were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth in slavery. Because we are the Israelites, the hidden ones, that the truth have been hid, that we are the children of Israel. We have been destroyed. We have been scattered this day in our captivity, Lord. We come before you today on the Sabbath, Lord, to glorify thy holy name. May the whole earth and all thy creatures praise thy holy name, Lord. Lord, we, we come before you today asking you for forgiveness of sins have mercy upon the 12 tribes of israel that have been scattered through the four corners of the earth in slavery lord lord asking for you to strengthen us strengthen us as we are on this earth accomplishing the mission that you have sent us on this earth to accomplish lord asking for you to protect the brothers that's traveling through the four corners of the earth lord the captains the deacons the bishops protect them lord and make thy work be prosperous in their hand, Lord. Protect us from all our enemies and everybody that seek to do us harm, Lord. Protect us, Lord, that we may be successful in what we are doing in thy name, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon the, the nation of Israel. Have mercy upon the sisters and the brothers that is sick amongst us. Heal us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Give us the strength to overcome all obstacles that is in our way, Lord. Lord, strengthen us in the name of your Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God. And salute. Most salute down. Face sisters. To the honorable mothers and daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Most Shalom, 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 Musa in Christ. Bless you all. Happy Sabbath, Israel. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. We in this building. Happy Sabbath, Israel.
Hope everybody having a restful and a blessed Sabbath. All of you brothers and sisters that is scattered through the four corners of the earth. I hope you brothers and sisters is enduring in this truth. Okay? Don't let nobody take your crown. Don't let no man take your crown. Okay? Understand that. All right? The Lord call you in this truth for, to get the kingdom of heaven. Don't let nobody come and put no evil inside your mind. Don't let nobody offend you in the sense where, listen, now you want to lead the truth. All right? What could separate us from the love of Christ, man? Huh? <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, hey, to all the brothers out there that's doing the work, that is scattered, that is scattered for the Passover, Yo, may the most I protect you, brothers, that's out there, man. You know? Yeah, so um, a lot of stuff going on in the world today, man. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. Every week is a bunch of things going on, man. I'm like, damn. Okay? Yeah, but today I'm going to touch on, the topic I'm touching on is the American dream. The American dream. Because guess what? A lot of you all got the American dream. I had the American dream. You know, that's why I came to America. I was looking for the American dream, man. I heard he had money on the streets here. I, I heard the streets was paved with gold, man. You know, I had that American dream. I, You know, when I was young, I used to pray to Jesus. Jesus, please let me go to America. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to touch on the American dream. The American dream. Okay? Before I go into that, you all know I want to start. I want to touch on something. Today we're in the Passover season right now. We're in the Passover season right now. That's right. Go to Matthew 26 and 17 and read that for me. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 17. Read to 21, then jump to 25. Yes, sir. Now... The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him. Wait, read that again. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Read on. The disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So where he said, where shall we go to eat the Passover? Okay, this is the disciples going to Christ. So what time is this talking about? The same time we are in right now, the Passover. Okay, the days of unleavened bread. Read on. And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. Uh-huh. You know. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said. And when the evening was come, they sit down and they what? And as they did eat, he said, Verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So on the Passover, while they were eating, they eating the supper. Okay, Christ said, one of you are going to betray me, man. One of you dudes inside here, you are going to betray me. Okay, read on. Verse 24. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. So a lot of times you read that this was done when this was done the night of the Passover, right? A lot of time we read that and we like, okay, you know, would I ever betray Christ? Would I, would, I, would I do what Judas did? Would I do that to Christ? You know, and this is some, we all got to ask ourselves. You understand? What Judas did, would you do that? A lot of, you, a lot of, a lot of people going to say, no, I'll never do that. I will never do that. But let me tell you all something. Anybody could become a Judas. I want, I want everybody to understand. Anybody could become a Judas. Okay, and it's many ways. It's many ways of becoming a Judas. Okay, because, for instance, if you carry hatred towards your brother, 
You understand? You carry, you stealing, you lying, the, you know, whatever sins you got inside of you, if you don't overcome it, you could become a Judas. Okay? Because remember, Judas was what? It says he was a thief. And he never repented of being a thief. And guess what? Satan came into him, and Satan ended up using him. Why could have Satan, why could, could have Satan use him? Because he was still in his sins. Remember what the scripture said, he that sinned is of what? Of the devil. So that's why Satan said, yo, I could use this dude right here. So the Passover was being held, it was a Passover supper, right? Christ break the bread. Um, we, we, I'll read that again in 25. Verse 24. So the son of man goeth as it is written. But, but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been it had been good for that man if he had not been born. Christ says, best if you didn't born, then you learn this truth and then you betray Christ. You know, sometimes people leave up out of here and they say, listen, I didn't betray Christ. I, be I betray you niggas. He's your niggas. I betray not Christ. Remember what Christ said. Christ says, as you have done to one of these, my disciples, you have done to me. Okay. When Judas... Did Judas just betray Christ? He betrayed who? Also the 12. He was trying to get them killed too. He was trying to get them killed too, not just Christ. Okay, when they came, they didn't just came for Christ. They came for the apostles too. Okay? Now, let me show you all something. I want you to go to, well, I want, let me see. Go to Matthew. Not Matthew. Um, yeah, Matthew 10, and what I want, 14 or something like that. Yeah, I just, I just digressing real quick. Uh, this just, this came to my mind. I want to, brother shall betray brother. Okay. Yeah, this just came to my mind. Matthew 10 and some one of them verses, man. 26 or something. Matthew chapter 10, verse... Is Matthew 10 nah. or is Luke 10? No, nah, not Matthew 24. Oh, y'all bear with me one minute, okay? Is Mark. Now, Matthew, no, what I want is Luke 10. Oh, no, no, not in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so get. Okay, that's it. Matthew 10 and 21. Matthew Thank chapter you. 10, verse 21. For it is... For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Okay. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the brother shall deliver up the brother unto death. No, it says the brother shall deliver up the brother unto death. For a brother to deliver a brother unto death, right? This, this is not just talking about brother in the sense of uh, blood brothers. It's literally talking about brothers, like we brothers in this truth, okay? The Bible says brothers shall de de deliver up brothers unto death, okay? Now, let me tell you all something. Judas was, he was brothers to the 12, right? To the, to the apostles, right? And Christ, right? And you see what he did. He delivered Christ up to death. Not just Christ, but his brothers, but, his, but Christ protect the other 11 okay when you read the history tell christ is christ tell them listen if you come for me leave these alone because they they were planning to kill christ and all the and all his disciples okay so judas did not just betray christ but he also betrayed the apostles okay now what i want you all to see is betrayal right Betrayal could only come from, when somebody could betray you, you got to come from somebody who you trust. You know, betrayal does not come from somebody 
that you don't trust, that's not in your circle, that's not around you, okay? That's why it's betrayal. You wasn't expecting it from that person. You know, you thinking that person was rolling in the spirit of Christ. But guess what? No, you didn't know he had some secret sins and he working for Satan. So now he have what? He have betrayed you. I want you all to understand that. Anybody could become Judas. Okay? Anybody could become a traitor. And as I said, a lot of times you be looking at this one out there, that one out there, but it's usually the person close to you. Okay, that's why the scripture says, brothers shall betray brothers unto death. You understand? Now, I ain't experienced the unto death stuff, but I had, I had brothers in this too that I was very close with, and they, and, and, and they turned out to be demons. Okay, they turn against me for no reason. I did nothing to none of these brothers, and they turn against me. You understand? None of them could say I ever I did anything to them. Evil. You understand? And bring substantiated proof and show it to anybody. Yo, he did this to me. You understand? So I learned the most I teach me in this truth. Listen, it's only them that close to you that, that could hurt you. You understand? It's only the people that are close to you that could hurt you. Okay, so when so go back. Go back to where I'm at again. No, I went here to, to go over the Passover, right? The, the days of unleavened bread, the last supper, Christ broke bread. And he told the men and them around him, he said, this is my body that's broken for you and so forth. The, the last supper, okay, which is what we're in right now. We are in the Passover. We are in the days of unleavened bread. Okay, so from there, I want to go to Corinthians 11 and 29. Corinthians 11 and 29. Now, if you, not, if you are in the midst of your sins, guess what? You will betray your brother. Just understand yeah. that. You will turn against your brother if you are in the midst of sin. Okay? You could stay here and be like, yo, I'll die for you. Da, 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 da. All of that is talk, man. You know? When it comes down to it and you get put to the test, you will turn against your brothers if you are in the midst of sin. Okay? Read that for me. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. First Corinthians 11, where you want? I want you to start at time. Where I want you to start. Hold on. Eh? This is 25. I want you to start at verse 23. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks... In he, the same night with, when he was what? Betrayed. When he was betrayed. When Christ was betrayed, he took bread. What bread that was? Unleavened bread. You understand? This was, it was the time of the Passover. Read on. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So the bread represent Christ's body. The unleavened bread represent Christ's body without sin. Read on. Which is broken for you. Which is broken. Is this is broken for you. Read on. This do in remembrance of me. So Christ says, I want you all to keep, when we keeping the Passover, are we keeping it just as we are doing it as what? This do in remembrance of me. When we keep the Passover, it's a remembrance of who? Of Christ. I hope you all understand that. When we do the Passover, it's in remembrance of Christ dying for us. Even when we break the bread, it's in remembrance of Christ being that Passover, him dying for us. That's what the bread represents. Okay, his body, that unleavened bread, represents him without sin. Okay, read on. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup. Is the New Testament in my blood. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Read on. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So you, we do it in remembrance of Christ. Read on. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Read on. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily so this Christ says listen if you break the bread and you drink the wine he says if you do that 
unworthily. What does he mean unworthily? When Christ was saying that, guess who he was speaking to in the in our match? He was talking to Judas. Because Judas was there and Judas knew he was about to go betray Christ. Judas knew he never really believed. But yet Judas still, Lord, is it me? And taking bread and drinking wine and he know that, guess what? I'm about to betray this man. I don't like this dude. I'm about to deliver him, deliver him up and get him killed. Don't matter Judas was doing all them miracles and all them stuff. Guess what? In all of that, he still went and betrayed the king. Okay? Read that again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. So you do this unworthily. Unworthily meaning you are in the midst of your sins. Okay? You are in the midst. You covetous. You are liar. You are adulterer. Okay? You are in the midst of your sins and you ain't trying to fix them sins and you taking part in this in this in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine read on shall be guilty of the body and blood of the lord it's like you murder christ you understand you're gonna be guilty so <laughs> so in, in the lord saying this guess what judas was guilty okay so the same thing for us today it's the same thing for us today you gotta examine ourselves while we on the on the day of unleavened bread and we eat in the bread we taking part in eating the bread and so forth we got to make sure that our mind is right you got to make sure the reason why you are here are you here to serve god or is just just a place to hang out for you are you here because you really want you want the kingdom of heaven you want that reward you want to live forever okay or you or here you just because my husband forced me here or my wife forced me here you know, why are you here? You got you to gotta make up your mind. You breaking that bread? Okay, you taking part in that unleavened bread, the Passover? You better make up your mind. Okay, why? what what are you doing? And you're not doing it unworthily. Read on. Verse 26. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Read on. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Read on. Eateth and drinketh damnation. If you eat and drink this Unworthily, the Bible says you take part in that last supper, the Christ, the Passover, the last supper where Christ was betrayed. Christ said, if you do this unworthily, you do what? Eat it and drink it damnation. You're going to be damned. Okay, read on. To himself. Read on. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not understanding what Christ came and did. Okay, because guess what? Judas did not discern the, the Lord buddy okay so judas brought damnation on himself okay read on for this cause and for this cause what's the cause because you're doing it unworthily i want you all to pay attention read on for this cause many are weak so you got many brothers and sisters that are weak and sickly and there's a and there's some of you all that get sick read on and sickly among you, and many sleep. And many of you go back into the world. You understand? When it says many sleep, it could be going into the Lord kill you, or you go back into the world. You all understand? So now, it says many are weak. What does that mean? It says, for this cause, many are weak amongst you. Okay, now... As I said, I've been in this truth long enough to, in order to discern certain things. Now, if you've been in this truth for five years, ten years, and you have no growth inside of you, you got that weak spirit, is because you are taking part in, you don't take this serious. You are taking part in this unworthily. You understand? I hope you all understand. That's how I could tell who is real and who is not. Okay, who could who is who have the cap capability of becoming a Judas? Why? Because you are stagnant in this truth. There's no growth in you. Okay? You are weak. Your spirit is weak. You are not becoming strong in Christ. You've been here for years and you that same person. There's no growth inside of you. So the scripture says, read it again. For this cause, many are weak 
and sickly among you. So it says many are weak. Weak. That's you, brother, that you came to the truth. And every other week, your wife is in some problem with somebody else. And you never check her. Your wife is controlling you. You ain't, you ain't correcting that woman. She always involved in some confusion. And we working with you saying, yo, trying to build this brother up to, to at least grow some kahunas. You understand? So at least get some guts so he could go and take his balls from his wife. You understand? But brother, I see brothers like that with us for years. Wife is disrespectful. And we trying to build the brother up, but years going by, and the brother never got it right. His wife still have his balls in her in her arm, in her in her purse. When he ready, like yo, baby, can I get my balls? Okay, yeah, here's your balls. You know, and what it was, get to find out the reason why this brother was weak, is because he been stealing. From us for years. So that's it right there. So when you brothers is weak, I'm gonna start watching you and digging into your into your stuff. You start moving weak, boy. Take weak and shiver down. <laughs> you start moving weak and so forth, and you are like, okay, it's sin. He dealing with sin. That brother or that sister dealing with sin. That's what the Bible is saying. Hope you all understand. That's what it is saying. Read it again. When you take in part of the breaking of the bread unworthily, okay, you will become weak. Your spirit going to be weak. Okay, you don't want to show, you don't really want to come to class like that. You come to class once a month or sometimes you don't even come to the Sabbath classes. You just come when it's the new moon or when it's a feast day, okay? So you could drink and have fun. You understand? You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't study the scriptures, okay? When the day come, you're not studying. You're not studying the Bible, okay? You, 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 you went. I'm doing the four chapters a day. You went studying. You went praying. You understand? That's you, brothers and sisters. That's weak. And the reason why is because you know you ain't right. You know you haven't changed or you're not trying to change. You are taking part in the Passover unworthily. You're taking part in this feast unworthily because this feast, the feast of unleavened bread, unleavened mean without sin. Okay? Christ is that unleavened bread. Okay? And he break it. He said, this is my body. You, do you take part in this unworthily? Guess what? It's like you. It's like you. It's like you took part in my debt. It's like you kill me. Okay? Read it again one more time. Verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Read on. And many sleep. And many sleep. And many sleep. No, I'm going to deal with that sleep real quick. Go to Ephesians 2 and 1. 2 and 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So we were dead one time in our trespass and sins. Okay, read on. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. And in time past we was walking after the course of this world, meaning the things in this world. Okay, that's what we was walking after. Read on. According to the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air is Satan. Read on. That the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So the point I wanted out of there is that what is that we were dead. One point of time we were dead in this world. Read it again, verse 1. Verse 1. And you hath he quickened. So God made us alive. Read on. Who were dead in trespasses and sin because we were dead in in our trespass and sins now what i'm why i'm going here i'm going here to explain to you when he says many sleep because you do this unworthily that's why a lot of brothers and sisters is sleep that sleep is you going back you going back to that dead state okay now i want you to go to revelation 3 revelation 3 and 1 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest and art dead. Read that again. I know thy what? I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest Read on. and art dead. So what is this saying? Some people have a, they put that front up that they live in, that they are alive, that they are in the spirit, that Christ is dealing with them, but they are what? Art and art dead. Why are they dead? Because they are, you still in the midst of your sins. Okay, you still in the midst of your sins. Read on. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Read on. That are ready to die. That are ready to what? To die. So this die is going into what? Is going into many sleep amongst you for this cause. This die is going into, remember, remember David says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. When God take his Holy Spirit from you, guess what? You become dead. Okay? When the Lord take his Holy Spirit from you, you are dead in his eyes. Okay? Read that again. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. So what was going on in the church? He says, strengthen the things that remain in the church that are ready to die. Meaning you had some brothers and sisters in the church that was taking part in the body of Christ unworthily. And they were about to fall out of the truth. They had a weak spirit. Their spirit was weak. They were about to die. They come to class once a month. They barely study. Okay, they got no works. So Christ says, yo, those that remain, that's about to die. My spirit about to leave them, strengthen them. Okay, strengthen them. No, even in this, even in the body, I could tell some of you brothers and sisters, some of y'all is about to die. You understand? There's no joy in your spirit. Okay? You always gossiping, murmuring. You know? That's all you're here for. And you think we're not see it. We see you, man. We see you clearly. <laughs> you know, you, you are about to die. You understand? So it's either one or two things you could do. You could repent and build yourself up. Build your spirit up. Ask the Lord for forgiveness and strengthen your spirit and become better and stronger in this truth. Or you could stay the way you are and you'll be out of here in the next year or two. You know, or you might just be here or wait for something to happen. This is what they do. They always wait for something to happen, like something big to happen, so they could just leave and say, oh, I left because of this. IUIC, they, they ain't right. You understand? Because they don't want to acknowledge, okay, Whatever they had inside of them, they want to, they had to fix. You know, some people do that, so they look for a reason to to leave. So Satan might attack us, whatever he might do, and our problems might arise in the congregation. And what brothers and sisters do, they use that for an excuse to say, "I don't, I don't want to be here. No, I'm leaving." You know, and then they do what? They blame you, blame us. You're wicked. I'm leaving. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, so read it again. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Read on. That are ready to die. Read on. For I have not found thy works perfect. Because they were what? Taking part in the bread, in the body of Christ unworthily. The Lord said, I have not found your works perfect. Okay? Now, go to Jude 1 and 12. Jude, verse 12. Jude verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. These are what? Spots in your feast of charity. So it says these are spots in your feast of charity. Meaning you're going to, um, in the feast, like the day of, uh, these feasts that we have, like the Passover, we have brothers and sisters amongst us that some of you all are just spots here. Meaning you don't belong here. You do not belong here. You are spots in our feast of charity. Read on. 
These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They feeding themselves without fear, meaning they taking part in the breaking of the bread, they eating the lamb, which is the body of Christ. You know, they not understanding, they doing it unworthily. That's why it says feeding themselves without fear. The Lord says, yo, don't do this unworthily. You're going to be destroyed. But you have brothers and sisters, they feeding themselves without fear, not understanding that the Lord going to bring judgment on you for that. Read on. Clouds they are without water. They are clouds without water. What's the sense of a cloud without water? Meaning a cloud, uh, a cloud, they are clouds without water. They got no understanding. Read on. Carried about of winds. What it mean carried about with winds? This, yeah, with different doctrines. Somebody says the Sabbath is on. It starts in the morning, not the evening. Here they go. Oh, I'm leaving. I believe what that person say. You understand? They are carried about with different winds. Okay, all kind of different doctrines. A new doctrine pop up, they gone. Okay, carried about with winds of doctrine. Read on. Trees whose fruit Wither it. Why it says trees who fruits wither, wither it. The fruits is talking about the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Meaning you learn how to love your brother. You learn how to keep the commandments and bring forth fruit. But your fruit withering away. Why is your fruit withering away? It's withering away because you are not studying. You are not praying. You're not, you're not applying. Mm -hmm. You understand? So you have become weak. Remember what we read early on. He said, for this course, many are weak. You have no root. You understand? So your tree is not strong, so your fruits are wither away. Okay, read it again. Trees whose fruit withereth. Read on. Without fruit, twice dead. Without fruits, what? Twice dead. You came into this truth, Christ woke you up, and you became alive in his sight. Then you went back to your evil. That's why it says you have been twice dead. Okay? You were dead before you came, before you heard this word. Then you change. And you repented. And then you come to the truth and guess what? You, keep, you, you went back to that same evil life that you had before. So guess what? No, you dead again. Twice. You twice dead. But guess what? You're twice dead, and you are in the body. You spots in our feast. You understand? You are amongst us committing adultery, lying, stealing, fornicating, okay, murmuring. All these evil you are doing in the feast. Okay, so that's why it says you are a spot in the feast. All of you all know who you all are, you know, that is spots, you know. You all know the things you all dealing with, and you all come to come come up in the feast every Sabbath and so forth, and you all act like everything is good, you know. But we could see that your spirit is weak. You understand? You have no works. Faith without works is dead. How can you say you believe in God, you believe in the Lord, you believe in Christ, but you have no works? Ask yourself that. You have no works, you have no faith. Trust me, you cannot fake this. As I said, a lot of you all are ready to die. Okay, you all are right. One, one foot in, one foot out. One foot in, one foot out. You're almost out. You ready to die. Okay? But one thing I could tell you, we ain't shedding no tears for none of you all, man. You know, don't think I'm going to shed tears for any of you. It is what it That's is. That's right. Okay, many are called, but few are what? Chosen. Few are chosen. Okay. So go back to Corinthians 11 and 29 and 30 and read that again. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 29. Uh -huh. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily... Eat it and drink it, damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We don't. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, 
and many sleep. So this is why a lot of brothers and sisters go back into the world. This is why a lot of you all are sick. Uh, this is why some of you all is not. This is why some of you all is sick. This is why some of you all go back to sleep, meaning you go back in the world. And this, and this is why a lot of you all are weak. The reason why is because you're taking part in the Passover unworthily. You're taking part in the breaking of the bread, the drinking of the wine unworthily. Not discerning the Lord body. Okay? Now, let me get into the topic. Is America in the Bible? America is in the Bible. Now, as I said, the topic I'm touching on tonight is the American dream. You know, everybody come to America trying to seek the American dream. Okay, including myself. I was used to try to seek that American dream. You know? But then I had to wake up. That's all right. right. I'm going to show you all something. Now, is America in the Bible? Yes. I'm going to give some scriptures to prove America is in the Bible. A lot of time people read, they, the Bible talk about what's going to happen in the last days. It says declaring the end from the beginning. So doesn't, doesn't, you know what, get that and read that for me. Isaiah 48. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Bring it out. Declaring the end from the beginning. Uh huh. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So, from ancient time, the Lord declared the things that have not yet done. The Lord declared the end from the beginning, right? So, you think, how did he declare it? He write his prophecies in the Bible. Okay, so you telling me, if the Most High declared the end, he's not going to. And America is the greatest country on the earth. Do you tell me that God is not going to record America in the Bible? Yes, America is in the Bible, but America, you're not, you're not going to find the USA or America. But America is written about in, in the Bible and is called by many different names. Okay? It's talking about the last kingdom that going to rise up on this earth. That's America. Okay, I'm, I'm going to prove that to you. Go to Daniel 7 and 19 and 20. Daniel chapter 7, verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. So when it says break in pieces and stamp the residue with his feet, it's going, into, it's going into what? When the white man came into power, that fourth beast, he conquered all nations. Okay, when the white man came into power, he conquered all nations. That's, that's what this is going into. Okay, <laughs> when he came into power as Rome, he conquered all nations. He fell, he came back in power as Spain and Britain, okay, and Portugal and those nations, and France. And guess what? He also conquered all nations at that time too. You understand? Read it again one more time. This is the fourth beast. The fourth beast is the last kingdom to rise up and rule this earth. Read it again. Verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, uh -huh. which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful. Uh-huh whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Read on. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up. And the other that came up. That other that came up is America. Read on. And before whom three fell. And before whom three fell. The three that fell is... You had France, Spain, and Britain. When it says three fell, it's talking about those three, those three of those heads. They, America had to fight with them for their independence, okay? That's what that means. Read it again. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up. The other that came up is America. Okay, read on. And before whom three fell. Three fell, the three that fell was Spain, was Spain France, and, and, and Britain, and Great Britain. America had to fight these three countries to be established as the USA, America. Read on. Even of that horn 
that had eyes. So it says that horn had eyes. That horn which had eyes, read on. And a mouth that spake very great things. The very great things is the lies. The lies and the blasphemies that comes out of America mouth. Okay, what's some lies? Some lies is saying Jesus Christ is white. Okay, some lies is, say, is, is them establishing the state of, of Israel. Okay, <laughs> saying that these people that they put there is the people of God. Okay, read on. In a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. And it says its look was stouter than its fellows because why? Because America is stronger than all the European nations put together. Okay? That's what it means. That It says its look was stronger than its fellows. Read on. I beheld. And the same horn made war with the saints. And the same war made war with the saints. The saints is the North American Indians, the children of the slave trade, the Israelites. That's who the saints are. That same horn, America make war with us. And it's also talking about what they will do. It's also going into Revelation 12. Revelation 12, when it said the dragon made war with the remnant that keep the commandments of God. Okay? This is war! Not just when they came here, they, they made war with us, but also... When they was establishing America, they made war with us because America was built on what? They, this land had belonged to who? You had Reuben here. You had Gad here. Okay. You had Issachar here. Okay. All them tribes, was they are the saints of God. They are the children of Israel. They were already on this continent. Okay. And America came and America did what? Made war with them and took the land from them. Okay, you? that's what happened. Read it again. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And prevailed against them. Hey, the first video I sent, can you pull it up real quick? From the 60s. Y'all pay attention. The first video I sent, pull it up and play it for me real quick. Is there any way y'all could put this thing on right here? I right, just do that. Play that video for me first. You studied your history, and you did not take over this country by singing "We Shall Overcome." You did not gain control of the world like you have it now by dealing fairly with a man and keeping your word. You're treaty breakers. You're liars. You're thieves. You rape entire continents and races of people. Then you wonder why these very people don't have any confidence or trust in you. Your religion means nothing. Your law is a farce, and we see it every day. You demonstrated it in Alabama. And I can say you because you're part of the whole system. You profit from it. In fact, you make your living from it. You couldn't walk around and talk to people, stand up in your pulpit on Sunday and preach nice little songs and say, now we're going to give thanks to the Lord for he is good and old Jesus be among us. As far as we're concerned, your Jesus is contaminated, just like everything else you tried to force upon us is contaminated. Okay, that was some, that's some good stuff right there. That's Judah in the 60s. He says, your, Ju your, your Jesus is contaminated yeah. and everything you touch is contaminated. You murder, you steal, you rape, and then you want to come go to your church and talk about you giving thanks to Jesus. Yeah. After you murder, you steal, you rob, how much millions of North American Indians you killed to, to get this land? Seminole Indians you killed to obtain this land. How much so-called Mexicans you killed to obtain this land? And then you saying, God, we trust. Yeah. Come on, man. Okay, but that's the American dream. That you all want to follow. You, all, you think that there is not a God? You think God did not see all that evil you did to establish this land? Okay? So, when it says that that horn shall make war with the saints and shall overcome the saints, is going into what they did to the North American Indians on this side of the world. That's what America, America destroyed them over here. Yeah. Okay? All right, so from there, from there, I want you to go to Revelation 17. So what is America? America is referred to in Daniel as the little horn. You all understand? That little horn with eyes as the eyes of what? 
of a man that's going into the wisdom that America have here through her technology. All right? Now go to, so I'm showing you all America in the Bible. Go to Revelation 17 and 11. Revelation chapter 17, verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. So the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Okay, so the eight beasts that we're reading about here in in um, Revelation 17, that eight beasts is America. Read on. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Read on. And is of the seven. And is of the seven. Why says of the seven? The seventh head was Great Britain. And letting you know America came from Great, Great Britain. Yeah. America gained their independence from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Okay, America came from one of the seven heads. Okay, the seven, when you, when you, um, the seven heads and ten horns, when you read Revelation 13, it's the seven great Edomite nations that rose up and ruled this earth. America came from the seventh one. Okay, read on. And goeth into perdition. And goeth into destruction. Okay, read on. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. That's the European Union's ten kingdoms read on which have received no kingdom as yet they wasn't a wrong at that time they wasn't a wrong in the time of john the revelator that's why it said they did not receive no kingdom as yet read on but receive power as kings one hour with the beast so they're gonna be ruling for a time with america okay when did this happen in right after world war two world war two in 1945 in 1945, they formed the NATO alliance, okay, and they formed the European Union. All right, who did this? America and Europe, them ten horns, okay? That's them giving their power unto the beast. The beast there is America. They gave their power unto America. America controlled the military and so forth. Okay, this all happened in 1945, in the 1940s. Okay, read on. These have one mind. And Europe and America have one mind. Read on. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Unto America. Read on. So the beast here in Revelation 17 that we're reading about, that the ten horns going to give their power to, that's America. Read on. These shall make war with the Lamb. Those ten horns going to make war. Europe will make war with Christ when he returns. That's what's, that's Bible prophecy. They're going to make war with Christ when he returns. Read on. And the Lamb shall overcome them. And Christ is going to destroy Europe. Right. He's going to destroy Britain. He's going to destroy Greece. He's going to destroy France. Okay? That's Bible prophecy. Read on. For he is Lord of Lords. Read on. And King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So from there, I want you to jump to verse 5. So I'm showing you all America in the Bible, okay? America in the Bible. Jump to Revelation. Jump to 5. Same 17, but verse 5. Yes, sir. Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery Babylon the Great. So, Mystery Babylon the Great. Who is Mystery Babylon the Great in the Bible? Is it talking about Iraq? Is it talking about, uh, is it talking about the Iranis? No, Mystery Babylon the Great. It says mystery is because it's a mystery to you all. You understand? It's a mystery to you all. Because you all don't understand that this place is Babylon. Okay? It's a mystery that this place is mystery Babylon to you all. We understand what it is. Okay? Read it again. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great. The she is Babylon the Great. She's not like ancient Babylon. This Babylon is Babylon the Great. Okay, read on. The mother of harlots. The mother of hoes. She create hoes. Okay. That's who America is, the mother of hoes. 
You know, she like the madame. Like, you know, the madame go and create hoes. Okay, that's America. Read on. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So Amer America is referred to in as by God as the abomination of the earth, the mother of harlots, the mother of harlots, harlots, Babylon the Great. Okay, so God also call America Babylon the Great. All of these terms is terms where God call America. Okay, I want you all to understand that. Okay, so from there, I want you to go to Revelation 18 and 1. I read to verse 3. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Yeah. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having, a, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great. Not Babylon. Babylon the Great. This is talking about America. Okay, Babylon the Great is what? Is fallen. Is destroyed. Read on. Is fallen. Read on. And has become the habitation of devils. So John the Revelator saw America being destroyed. Okay, remember what we read early on, early on in Isaiah 46. The most high God declared the end from the beginning. So... John the Revelator, he saw America, and he saw America being destroyed. Okay? America is destroyed. Read on. And the hold of... But, but the Bible, or God, doesn't call this place America. He called it Babylon the Great. Okay? Read on. And the hold of every foul spirit. Uh-huh. Read on. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Read on. For all nations... Have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations took part in of in America's sins. Read on. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Read on. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of, of her delicacies. So the nations of the earth, how did they get rich? To America. Okay, China is a superpower on the earth today. China did not become a superpower by herself. China became a superpower by trading and buying and selling and trading with America. Okay? Saudi Arabia, all of these countries, they, be, they became rich. They are rich. Right. They are rich by trading with America, showing that all these things have already been fulfilled that we're reading about. All nations have already got rich from America. Now they're giving America the finger. China is giving America the finger. A lot of them countries giving America the finger. They already are rich already. They were already made rich. Okay? Now, go to Zechariah 2 and 7. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 7. Yeah. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So Zion is the children of Israel. Okay? The Bible says that Zion going to be dwelling with the daughter of Babylon. Okay? So who is the daughter of Babylon? Go to Psalms 137 and 7. So, no. Psalms chapter 137 verse 7. No. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Read on. In the day of Jerusalem, who said... Race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon. O what? Daughter of Babylon. So Edom is the daughter of Babylon. So when it says deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon, is it talking about that dwelling with who? Edom. Edom, with so-called Caucasian race. Because the Edomites is the daughter of Babylon. It's talking about us, our people that dwell in here in America. Okay? So America, so America is also called the daughter of Babylon. Okay? So from there, I want you to go to Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of... Of the great city. The what? The great city. So 
America is also referred to as the great city. The great city. Why? Because there's no other greater city than America on this earth. I want you all to understand that America is referred to as the great city. Okay? We don't. And it says the dead bodies. Why dead? Because the, is the dead bodies is talking more to Israelites because the Israelites is in a dead state of mind here in America. Okay? We are spiritually dead here. Okay? Our people don't know who they are. They have forgotten their nationality. Okay? They call themselves American, Afro-American, colored, all kind of different terms. Read on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this place is also called what? Sodom and Egypt. So America is also referred to, it's called by God spiritually Sodom and Egypt. You all understand? So this place is also referred to as Sodom and Egypt. Why Sodom? Because the same thing that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, God said that same spirit is here. Okay, the same way how the children of Israel was enslaved in ancient Egypt and was oppressed is the same thing here in America. You all understand? Okay, this, so from there, I want you to go to... Uh, Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the wearer of I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So... Before you before you read that scripture, hey, can you play the next video I had sent? Can you send the other video I had sent? Yeah, that right there. So so it says that we shall be, we shall be, we shall be um that their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. That spiritually, that spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Okay, I want you all to see this. This little um, play that these sisters did in the 60s. I tell you, in the 60s, our people, they think different from how we think today. I want to see what these young girls was, was saying. What has America done for me? Nothing but made me a zombie. I don't know who I am. I try to act like somebody else. No name, no violence, no culture. Got our woman acting like some auntie mamas, fueling, sapphires, got Acting like sex and fiction, man time older, will he best in some rock chesses? What has America done for me? Nothing, but made me a zombie. Took away my uncle life, gave me some brooks with some dead white man hanging from it. Teaching us about Mary had a little lamb. Mary was white, the lamb was white, and what about old Snow White? Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to give her poor dog a bone. I lied, she gave the dog a face and gave the bone to Negroes. Neck bones, pig feet, ham hock, chitterlands, guts, made of gut eaters, whiskey consumers, dope users, Uncle Tom niggas. That's what America done for me. Made me a robot, a Frankenstein, a puppet. What has America done for me? No. No. What have America done for us? It made us zombies. <laughs> Okay, America have made us into zombies. They took our nationality, they took our identity, okay, and they made us zombies. Now, what we see taking place here in the 60s, I'm going to touch on some things concerning the 60s, okay? The 60s was a very important time in history, and I'm going to touch on some stuff con concerning the histories, the history from the 60s. Okay, but back then, you see what was going on. I was, you saw what people was talking. You're not going to find young girls talking like that no more. You're going to see young girls twerking. You understand? <laughs> That's what you're going to see. Okay? So they got, we, we as a people got worse over time. Okay, but it's up to us, brothers and sisters, to resurrect and bring back real stuff like that. Okay? All right? Now, from there, I want you to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. 
And the Lord shall bring thee into. Oh, no, no. Read back. Read back. Revelation 11 and 8. Read that real quick. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Amen. And their dead bodies. And their dead bodies. Remember what the sister said. What have America done to us? Nothing but made us zombies. Mm -hmm. Nothing but make us zombies. What scripture does goes back to, to what that young sister was saying is Revelation 11 and 8. Read that again. And their dead bodies. The dead bodies is the zombies here in America. Is the Negroes of the, the the slaves that's living here in America, okay? That's here in America. The dead bones that's here in America. Read it again. And their dead bodies Read on. shall lie in the street of the great city. Read on. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So this place is called Sodom and Egypt. Now go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Egypt that we're reading about here that God is going to bring us again in ships, the Egypt here is America. You understand? The Egypt here, first and foremost, starts with America and the other lands that we was took in as slaves. Okay, because the word Egypt means house of bondage. Okay, read it again one more time. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, you might have some people that say, Egypt is not, Deuteronomy 28, 68, is not talking about America. And over here, it's talking about, it's talking about ancient Egypt. I'm going to show you all it's not talking about ancient Egypt. Read on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou read, thou, read on. Thou shalt see it. You're not going to see Egypt. No more again. No more again. Letting you know you're not going back into Egypt again in ships. Mm -hmm. Moses is letting them know, I'm not talking about ancient Egypt. The right. Egypt I'm talking about here is a new Egypt. Why was Moses able to say this? Because Moses saw the future. Moses saw us on cargo slave ships being brought to the shores of America. The Lord, the Lord showed Moses all of that in the beginning. That's why Moses was able to write, listen, you Israelites are going to go into slavery on ships, man. Okay? No, I want you to go to Deuteronomy, no Exodus 14 and 13, yes, to show you that it's not talking about ancient Egypt when he says, thou shalt see it no more again. Read it again. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, Read on. which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today Ye shall see them again no more. So we did not go back into Egypt a second time. You understand? We ain't went back. Moses said, the Egyptians, you see, you're not going to see them no more again. Okay, read on. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Forever. So when you go back to Deuteronomy 28 and read it again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. So when it says we're going to go into Egypt again with ships, that Egypt is the Egypt in Revelation 11 and 18. Sorry. Revelation 11 and 8. Sorry. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The way where I'm speaking to you right here, you're, you're not going to see this land Egypt again. Read on. And there. And there, meaning where the slave ships take you read on ye shall be sold unto your enemies the israelites will be sold to their enemies read on for bondmen for slave men and bond women and slave women and no man shall buy you and nobody will be able to redeem us from these land that we have been sold as slaves okay now i want you to go to go to do, jump to verse 48 verse 48 read out. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So the Bible says that the white men, when we get off them ships, 
we're going to serve them for the one of four things, meaning for education, for food, clothing, shelter. We all have to serve the white men for that. And it says that what? And he shall what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So we have been destroyed as a people. When it says we have been destroyed, it means we have, we have been turned into zombies. That's what it means by we have been destroyed. We have no culture. We have lost our identity. We have lost our God, our images of who our God is, of who we are as a people. We have been destroyed. You understand? We are zombies. Okay? We are the walking dead. We are that valley of dry bones in Ezekiel 37. Okay? Now, I want to show you all something. Go back to Revelation 11 and read verse 8. Revelation. So when it says, and he shall put yokes of iron upon our necks until we have been destroyed. Okay, they dis meaning they, they make sure we couldn't read and write and they destroy who we are. They took our, not our identity from us. They did that to us in slavery. Okay, now it's something that took place from there in Revelation 11 and 8. To, read that for me. Revel so they turn us into zombies. Okay, read Revelation 11 and 8 one more time. Revelations 11 verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. We jump, jump to verse 11 now. Verse 11. Now and I, I want you all to see the prophecy. So they took us and they enslaved us. They destroyed God's people. But guess what? The white men understand the Bible. Okay, they're in these last days, there's certain elite, let me put it that way, that understand the Bible and put things in place to try to stop our people from waking up. I want you to read, uh, read that for me, yeah. Verse 11. And after three days and a half. After three days and a half. Three days and a half is talking about 350 years. Okay, after 350 years, read on. The spirit of life from God Entered into them. So the spirit of God going to enter into the Israelites. That goes back to Ezekiel 37. Can these dead bones live? Okay, the spirit of life from God is going to enter into us. How? That's because right. God sent, he sent Elijah. Elijah came on this earth and he started teaching and start waking us up. Okay, read it again one more time. And after three days and a half. That's after 350 years. Read on. The spirit of life from God entered into them. Enter the spirit of life from God enter into them. Can you can you put up calculator on the screen and calculate from 19 from 1619 to to um huh? No, just add I want you to see when three I want 350 three, yeah 1619 plus 350 years. Okay, so, 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 okay. What, what that says? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What it says what? 1969, right? When did the, when did the elders and them set up that school? I ain't talking about the refurbished, right, them right. dudes that running around talking about, we the original, no. I'm talking about the original leaders and them that set up that school. What? When did they set it up? 1969, right? Interesting. 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 Okay. Now, what I'm about to show you also, after 350 years, you know, the truth start to be teach back on the on the earth and there's levels to the truth being taught okay even back then in 19 in in because the truth was even being taught before 1969 you had brothers that knew they were israel and so forth okay but what what i just did did Esau. what he did you know the scripture says why y'all some of y'all might says israel went into slavery in the 1400 yes the first slaves came from spain and so forth. Yes, I understood all of that. But what Esau did, I'm checking it this way because from nine, from 1619, because 
Remember what the what the scripture says. The children of Judah and the children of what? It was what? Oppressed together. So I'm checking from when both tribes was started to be oppressed together. You understand? Okay, that's why I checked from from 1619. Okay, and that's where Esau checked from too. That's why the things that took place in the 60s is not by coincidence. Okay, it's not by coincidence. Okay, now let me show you all what, what took place in the 60s. Go to Genesis 49 and start at verse 1 and then jump to verse 8. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So Jacob called his sons together and he says, Listen, I, wanted, I want you to know what's going to befall you in the last days. Meaning in the, in the end of days, the times we are living in right now. Okay, so what, we, what I'm about to read about Judah is going to identify who Judah is in the last days. At least Judah on this side of the world. I want you all to understand that. Because does it have Judah on, in, in Africa? Yes. yes, but the main Judah we're dealing with is the Judah on this side of the world. The house that's of David. Right. You understand? Okay, they are different from the other Judites that scatter. <laughs> okay, the other Judah that scatter, the Judah that's here in America is different. Why? Read that for me. Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. So when it says Judah's hand shall be in the neck of his enemy, what is this going into? In the 60s, the 70s, it's going into the American blacks. They rose up and was fighting against the so-called white men. You understand? The white men is the enemy, the people that enslaved them. They were fighting for, for equal rights and justice, okay? It was the civil rights movements. This is war. Okay? You had the Black Panther Party. You had Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, okay? And all the leaders that rose up and was fighting for our people back then were all assassinated and murdered, okay? I hope you all understand that they all was assassinated and murdered by the U.S. government. That's okay. right. No, read it again one more time. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. When it says Judah's hand will be in the neck of his enemy, it means that Judah is fight. You got to be in close proximity of your enemy in order for your hand to be in his neck. Yeah. Okay, it ain't talking about Benjamin. I was in the island chilling, sipping on some coconut water. Fishing and relaxing, you understand? Now I ain't talking about Benjamin. It's talking about the blacks that living in America amongst the so-called white men. In 19, wait, I think 1965, Trinidad, we gained independence. You know, the, you know, we gained independence. The white men destroyed us and left us on the island by ourselves. So I never experienced racism over there. You know what I mean? At least not physically, okay? Not physically. You understand? But Judah, you all was here living with the white men. That's why the scripture said, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest, that living with who? Daughter of, Daughter of Babylon is who? The white man. You know? No. And was a lot of oppression taking place here in America. Was a lot of um, discrimination. Judah was being lynched. Judah caught hell. Dogs being set. On our brothers here in America, okay. Now this is the reason why a lot of a lot of a lot of brothers they don't like police officers, because the police officers was used to oppress us, set dogs in us and so forth and so on, you know. Now check this, right? Um, read on. Judah, thou art he whom, whom thy brethren shall praise. Read on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Your hand gonna be in the neck of your enemy. Read on. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. When he said Judah's hand shall be in the neck of his enemy, meaning he gonna be fighting the so-called white man. The reason why the rights that everybody take taken for granted here in America, the reason why you got them rights is because of Judah. <laughs> okay, read on. 
Judah is a lion's whelp. He's a lion's whelp. A lion's whelp is a young, strong lion. This is talking about Judah in the 60s and 70s. They were like a, they were like a young, strong lion. Read on. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Judah is going up to the prey. The prey is who? The enemy that he got his hand in the neck of. Okay? Choking his behind out. Read on. That's he stooped right. down. He couched as a lion. So it says Judah stooped down and he crouched as a lion. As a young, strong lion. Read on. And as an old lion. And all of a sudden he turned into an old lion. Read on. Who shall rouse him up? So who going to rouse up the tribe of Judah? Christ. That goes back to after three and a half days, the spread of what? Life shall enter into him. So the elites in society understood this. That's why they say, yo, in the 60s, we got to make sure we got to look for the rise of any black messiah. We got to kill all of them, assassinate them. Because the Bible prophecies that the spirit of life going to enter into them. And they're going to rise up on their feet. You all understand? It's not coincident the white man did what he did in the 60s and 70s against Judah. And I'm going to show you all some against that. that I'm going to show you all them same traps that Judah got caught up in. Those of us that come from the islands and from different parts of the world to come here and live here in America... We get caught in them same damn traps. You understand? We get caught up in them same damn traps. Okay? No. So the American blacks is the tribe of Judah. Okay? They are the ones why all these rights you have today, you got it. Okay? No, I want to show you all some. No. Play that other video I got there, man. Play that other video I got there. It's a sister going in. Yeah. Three video number three. The only reason why your black ass would be able to come over to America and be able to do anything is because of the hard work, the the blood, the sweat, the fighting, and the dedication of African Americans who on this soil changed this land. African Americans are the ones who got this country integrated. Let me explain something to you. White people in this country did not give us anything. We have had to take, we took in the 1960s. We took their lynchings, their terrorizing, their burning down of our neighborhoods and we continue to rebuild and rebuild and revisit and retwist and re-rise up what it is that we have done in this country. And the only reason why anybody can bring their black ass over here from another mother effing country is because what black Americans have done on this land. And I'm saying this as a person who is bicultural, whose father is not American, doggone it. My father is an immigrant and he was able to come over to this country and do something in this country because of the black people who fought, who died, who bled, who were lynched on this land. So don't sit your black ass over there in some other goddamn country talking about what you would do in America. The only reason why your black ass could even get the F over here is because of what we have done. Doggone it. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. Okay. All right. So yo, I'm going. That's I'm going right. big Judah up, man. You know what I mean? You know, you know, we gotta get Judah the props because the things that Judah did, the fight and struggles Judah went through. Listen, man. Yo, I'm telling you, it was crazy. It was crazy, man. Okay, I think I sent another video. I didn't send it. Hold on. Yeah, I didn't send it. Okay, now let me tell you all something. The rights that, the civil rights that Judah have fought for in this country, it have been hijacked by the, by Ju by the Jewish community, <laughs> by Chinese, <laughs> by homosexual. <laughs> you understand? Okay, the civil rights have nothing to do with slavery anymore. It got the rights, the, now they, they sign in law, but... Civil discrimination against Jewish people, civil rights, civil rights, rights for men to sleep with men and all type of craziness, man. Okay? 
but the, the civil rights movement in the beginning was about the struggle, the black struggle, was about the oppression that black people was catching here in America. You can't even take a shit in the same toilet they shit in it. So you can't, your shit is, my shit is too holy to be mixed with your shit. I don't want you drink from the same fountain. I don't want you sit in the same restaurant that I sit in. Now, let me tell you something about segregation. Okay? When in them integration, when they integrated us, integration, it made us weak. Because when we were segregated, we had our own businesses, our own community. So even integration, I think it was, it, 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 it made us weak, but it was according to prophecy. That's right. What do I mean? In Daniel 2 and, and 44, Daniel 2, it says the, the miry, the toe, the clay shall mix with the iron. That's why they shall be partly strong and partly broken or something like that. Something that is then showing you that what Martin Luther King and them brothers did, they was fulfilling prophecies. Okay? America had to build a society that's all in that's all inclusive. That had to happen. Okay, no, I want to show you all some things, right? So yo. The civil rights movement. I sent some some articles. The civil rights movement in the 1960s, right? The 1960s, the civil rights movement. Um, yeah, I want you to read that. President Lyndon Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So I want you all to pay attention to that name. His name was what, President? President Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon, President Lyndon Johnson or Lyndon B. Johnson. He signed the Civil Rights Acts, Act. Okay. President Lyndon Johnson. Okay, he was the 36th president of the United States of Babylon. Okay, now, I think he came into power after Kennedy was assassinated. You see, as, I'm, as I put in these classes together, I'm learning history too. Because some things I didn't know. I said, what, what number president he was? How old was? You know what I mean? So he went into power after... He, he became president after he was vice president and he became president after Kennedy was assassinated. Hmm. Now, he signed the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Okay? Now, let's see what else he did. I got another thing there. Okay, so he also... Yeah, read that. Commemorating the history of SNAP. Looking back at the Food Stamp Act of 1964. So he also gave us food stamps. You know, he, fought, he, he signed the Food Stamp Act, you know, of 1964. Now, some of you all might say, wait, that was a good thing. He fought the civil rights and then he gave us food stamps? What's going on here? I don't know for those of you all that never been on public assistance, but I know about public assistance. I know the traps behind that. The trap behind Section 8 and housing. You understand? So, and I'm going to explain them things to you all a little. Some of you all will understand. Some of you all don't understand. Judah, that's here, they understand. Okay? Now, um, keep, um, read that. let's read the beginning for me. On August 31st, 1964, President Johnson signed the Food Stamp Act of 1964 as a centerpiece of his War on Poverty which introduced numerous programs designed to improve the American quality of life. Okay. <laughs> the American quality of life. So now I'm going to show you all the traps. Yo, I'm going to show you all the traps. So then, so we got, so, okay. So I want the other image. President Lyndon Johnson signed, or no, the other one. Yeah, that right there. Go down or read that. Did Lyndon B. Johnson say I'll have those niggers voting Democratic for 200 years? So what you all don't know, before he signed those Civil Rights Act, he had meetings, he sat down with people talking, and that's how he was talking. I'm going to show you all this dude was, 
Do not think these Democrats or liberals love black people, man. Do not think they love you all. That's why they signed those the Civil Rights Act. Okay, keep going down. Let's see this demon. Keep going down. Go, okay, keep going. I go down. Yeah, I'll go down. Yeah, read that right there. These Negroes, they're getting pretty uppity these days. What? So this is what Lyndon B. Johnson said. He said, these Negroes is getting pretty uppity. These uppity niggas, like Candace Owens. <laughs> Keep on reading. And that's a problem for us since they've got something now they've never had before. The political pull to, pu to back up their uppityness. Now we've got to do something about this. We've got to give them a little something, just enough to quiet them down. So, so this is what Lyndon B. Johnson said. He said, we got to give them a little something just to quiet them down. That's what the civil rights is about. That's what the food stamps is about. Okay, is to give you a little something to quiet you down because you're so uppity. You know, you, you start complaining. You want rights. Keep on reading. Uh, we've got to give them some a little something, just enough to quiet them down, not enough to make a difference. Not enough to make a difference. You all understand? In them signing the Civil Rights, the Civil Rights um, Act, that was not enough to really make a difference for you all, for, for black people. Americans here in this country. Okay? Now, keep on um, reading. This quote appears on page 155 of Goodwin's Lyndon B. Johnson's biography. The utterance was made to Richard Russell, a fellow Democratic senator from Georgia. So this is what he said to our fellow Democratic senator. Okay? And this is a Democrat we're talking about. Keep on. Keep going down. Keep going down some more. Go down some more. All right. I, I want you to. What's that? What that city? Uh, Keep going down. It's something I want. That's it? Okay. I right, go back. Go up. Go back up. Something I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on reading. The source of the 200 years quote is Ronald Kessler's 1995 book, Inside the White House. Kessler got the quote from Robert McMillan, an Air Force One steward who, was, who said Lyndon B. Johnson uttered this comment to two governors during a conversation on the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Snopes, a fact-checking website, states that there's little evidence to back up the quote. Yes, he did say it. Read on. It's a strange claim, since Snopes admit the quote wouldn't have been entirely out of the character for Lyndon B. Johnson. Because his ass was racist. We don't. And other sources corroborated many of, of the other juicy tidbits. Macmillan gave Kessler such as Lyndon B. Johnson's penchant for walking around nude in the presence of others. So why doubt the quote's authentic authenticity? Snopes brings into question Macmillan's veracity. Noting that Lucy Baines Johnson flatly denied McMillan's claim that when she was a teenager, she once screamed at him to go find my nigger. <laughs> go find <Huh>? my nigger. <laughs> Where my nigger at? Hey, man, you think these Democrats love black people? Keep on reading. And threatened to slap him if he didn't. It must not have occurred to Snopes that many people would flatly deny such a claim. That the fact-checking outfit which has a notable left-leaning tilt, seems primarily concerned with defending the idea that Lyndon B. Johnson's action on civil rights was anything but genuine idealism. They ignore or overlook the following facts to reach this conclusion. Kessler's source is, his, Kessler's source is historically a first-hand account from an eyewitness. Lyndon B. Johnson's paternal and racist rhetoric toward African Americans African Americans has fondness for the use of the word nigger. <laughs> is well documented. Cast some doubts on the idea that his motivations on civil rights were ultra altruistic. Lucy Baines Johnson, 
who likely heard her father use the racial epithets would have motivation to deny any racist utterances she might have made. Goodwin's quote confirms that Lyndon B. Johnson possessed a well-honed political calculus on the issue of civil rights. If Lyndon B. Johnson said that what McMillan claimed, McMillan's editorializing comments, which Snopes frowned upon, makes sense. McMillan used the words phony and ploy to characterize Lyndon B. Johnson's motivations on the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Numerous historians have, have Lyndon B. Johnson on record referring to the Civil Rights Act of 1957 as the nigger bill. <laughs> Yo, I tell you, man, this is a Democrat. He said, that's a nigger bill. Get him a little sum to shut him up. But what I want out of this, there's another part in it that says he's going to have us voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Right keep here. going. Okay, keep on reading. Number seven. Number seven. One can imagine Lyndon B. Johnson saying what McMillan claims, he said, especially if Lyndon B. Johnson was trying to whip up support for his bill among reluctant Democrats. Okay, there was something else that says that. Keep going up. Keep going to the top, to the top, to the top. For the, for the next 200 years. I'll have those niggers okay, voting. Okay, no. Um, read, um, G, read it from the beginning. Uh, no. From LBJ? Yeah. Linda B. Johnson... A bear swilling, blunt speaking Texan didn't shy from using what today we refer to as the N word. One sentence often, one sentence attributed to Lyndon B. Johnson, which has gained great fame on the internet, is this I'll have those niggers voting Democrat, Democratic for 200 years. So you'll what? see why they passed the Civil Rights Bill, right? To keep you Negroes, you niggas. I know some of y'all don't like that term. Is that with that? Yo, listen, hey. To, to, to have us, to have them voting, uh, voting Democrat for the next 200 years. You know, you all ever really ask yourself, okay, the Republicans supposed to let us go to slavery, right? Gave the bill to let us go to slavery, whatever. You know, which that never really happened. I'm going to touch on that in a minute. The Democrats, they say, listen, if we sign that civil rights bill, niggas going to love us for the next 200 years. Didn't, haven't you all see that? You all ever ask yourself, why does black people always vote Democrat? You don't find that suspicious. You understand? Okay. So, so it was, so he, you remember what we read? He says, get him a little something. To shut them up. These niggas is getting too uppity. Now, I'm going to show you all something. Remember, when, when all of these things taking place? In the 60s. In the 60s. It's not a coincidence. Because they understand in the 60s, that's when Judah going to wake up. Now, I want to show you all something about these liberals. I want you to go to, um, I got a video there with Malcolm. Explain that. For these damn Democrats or, or what you call liberals. <laughs> Yeah, it's there. 22. Uh -huh. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox, and a fox is always more dangerous in the forest then the wolf, you can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to, but the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling. You take him for a friend. Okay, so Will, William B. Johnson is a damn demon. He's a fox. These liberals, you cannot trust them, okay? You cannot trust these liberals. So now, go to Isaiah 31. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 5. For the vile person. Isaiah 32 and 1. Start there first, then jump yes, to 5. Sir. Verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. So this is the king that shall reign in righteousness. is talking about Christ. Yahweh Shai. Read on. And princes shall rule in judgment. Read on. Verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called 
liberal. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. This is talking about these damn Democrats. You all understand? The Bible says they are vile. The vile person shall no more be called liberals. Okay, read on. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. The churl is the wicked, that wicked person. They, they, it, no go, it, it, it will no more be said that they are bountiful. Read on. For the vile person will speak villainy. For the vile person will speak villainy. Now, the things that's coming out of their mouth is what? You see what we just read, what um, Lyndon B. Johnson was saying? All of that is villainy. He said, yo, I'm going to get these dumb niggas to, to, to vote Democrats for the next 200 years. <laughs> he, said, he said, listen, get them, get them a little something, not much to make a difference. Because them niggas is uppity. Mm -hmm. They get into uppity. That's villainy he's speaking. Yep. That's villainy. Read on. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy to practice hypocrisy read on and to utter error against the lord and to utter error against god okay because a lot of these things that they got set up is against god and it's to destroy god people i'm going to show you all what i mean by that in a minute read on to make empty the soul of the hungry to make empty the soul and what this is what you ought to pay attention to the liberals the things that they devise is to make empty the soul of the hungry. Read on. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. And he going to make cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. So what is this saying? Go to Matthew 5 and 6. Who is hungry and who is thirsty? It's, it's letting you know the vile things that these liberals is setting up. They're really setting it up to what? To stop the truth. You all understand? They really setting these things up to stop the truth. Okay, the brothers and sisters that are thirsty. Okay, I'm read that for me. Matthew, you said five and six? Yeah, five and six. Matthew chapter five, verse six. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So the Bible says, blessed is they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. What does that mean? It means that you hungry for this truth. You thirsting for this truth. You understand? You want you want to learn who you are. You want to keep God's laws. Learn God's laws. Keep God's laws. Okay? The Bible says, bless are you. Okay, so when we go back to Isaiah. 32, verse 6. Read that again. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. Read on. To practice hypocrisy. Read on. And to utter error against the Lord. Read on. To make empty the soul of the hungry. He... His job is to make hungry the soul of those brothers and sisters that's hungry. Your soul, those of you brothers, that goes back to us being dead here in, in Babylon. You all understand? Their job is to make our souls empty. Okay, make sure we don't wake up to the truth that we are the Israelites. Okay, make sure we stay niggas. Okay, read on. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The drink of the thirsty to fail. What is the drink? Remember Christ says, I'm that living water. Is this truth? Okay, so in the 1960s, all these things that was being set up, it was set up as a design to destroy the black community, the Israelites, and to stop the truth from growing. I'm going to show That's you all that. That's right. Okay, that's what it's saying here. That what these liberals is doing. They're trying to stop they, they, the, the soul of the hungry. Okay? Now, keep on reading. Verse 7. The instruments also of the churl. The instruments of the churl, read on. Are evil. God says it's evil. The instruments is the things that they got set up in society that you think is to help you. God says it's evil. Okay, the civil rights movement that they set up, that civil rights stuff is evil. Section 8, food stamp, them things is evil. They said, let me get them a little scrum to shut them up. And I'm going to show you all how that's evil. Read on. He deviseth wicked devices. He devised 
wicked devices like what like the civil rights movement mm. like um because what they did let me tell you what they did is a jewish man who wrote that speech i had a dream and after martin luther king realized what these liberals was doing they killed him mm. and hijacked the civil rights movement the civil rights Civil rights movement today is run by Jewish people, homosexual, and Chinese, and all type of different people. You feel what I'm saying? It have nothing to do with the struggle of black people anymore. Okay, of the of the blacks here in America. The civil rights movement have nothing to do with you no more. Okay, read on. He devises wicked devices. He devises wicked devices. Read on. To destroy the poor. To what? To destroy the the poor to destroy the poor to destroy the poor read on to destroy the poor with lying words so no check this right the devices that he devised to destroy the war, the poor no i'm going to touch on some things let's go back to the let's go to the food stamps okay that came about in 1964 no let me see some videos i got there Now, play number five. Result of policies begun in the 1960s. This is not a legacy of what Pause. happened 100 years. So he says the policies in the, in the 1960s helped destroy black families. I tell you all, in the 60s, what serious warfare was going on, man to destroy Judah here in America because they understood after three, 350 years, the spirit of life of God going to enter into us. Keep on playing. Before the 1960s. The breakdown of the black family is not a legacy of slavery. No. If you, uh, the, the, the classic study of this goes all the way back to the era of slavery, and they find that most uh, black kids, even under slavery, had lived with two, with two parents. And that was true all the way up until the 1960s. Uh, and so you, if you really want to find out what has happened, what's changed, it has changed since the 1960s. And the fact that, that, that whites now have a higher rate of illegitimacy than blacks had when Moynihan wrote suggests that this is uh, something that spreads out. But, but if you look at something else, if you look at those blacks, and look at black husband-wife families, mm -hmm. uh, the... Uh, Poverty rate among such families has been in single digits ever since every year since 1994. Okay, so from there, play the next one, four. Play number four. So from the 1960s, there was uh, an, 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 let me say an attack. An attack by the U.S. government to destroy the black family. Okay, play this here for me too. Trying to be patient, and I ain't want to be yelling at you, brothers, and thinking about your stay in the spirit, man. Come on. Okay, read it again Isaiah for me one more time. Isaiah 32, verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. So the instruments that they got set up, the Bible says it is evil. Read on. He deviseth wicked devices. The devices is these programs that he got set up. Read on. To destroy the poor. And these programs that he got set up, it destroyed the poor. Okay? Now, what does public assistance does? It removed the husband from the house. Okay? Keep playing. You good? I play. The man in the house rule was written to prevent welfare cheating. To make sure that aid to families with dependent children would go only to families headed by mothers. But the effect of the man in the house rule is to create for children an atmosphere of investigation and surveillance. And thus, the welfare system in its operation turns out to be a system to make life harder for children. The welfare system helps the disintegration of the American family. It uh, offers money to families if the fathers will leave them and stay away, in that sense undoing 
the very stability of the family and taking away one of the two parents the children, of course, need. And uh, what I have seen, I'm afraid to say, all over the country is that the legal system works against the best kind of home for these children. They'll read it again. Verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. So God says the instruments, the things they got set up, God let you know it's evil. They give you welfare, but then they say no man can be in the house. No man can be in the house for us to give you this money right here. Okay, we're going we gonna to pay your rent. We're going to give you food stamp, take care of you, but guess what? No man in the house. We don't, there should be no man in the house. Okay? Now, it's, it's, and the thing about it is that you're going to be dealing with a social worker. There's no man in the house, but every year you get getting pregnant. And they don't be like, okay, you're getting pregnant. You are dealing with a man. A man is in the house. They didn't care about that. They just wanted to make sure a man is not literally in the house. She could be sexing, having kids and, and so forth. I'm putting them on, on the system. But once the man is not in that house, living there, guess what? They don't care. Why is that? Because it's really to get the man out of the house to destroy the black family. You all understand? That's why God says these liberals and the liberal things that they got set up, it's evil, man. Okay? It's evil. Don't trust. The liberals is the worst. They worse than anything on this side of the world. These liberals, or what you call them, Democrats. Okay? Now, well, um, let's play the other video for me. Six. Eight percent of black husbands were in their homes married to the mother of their children when they started the social engineering of the welfare state. Fast forward 50 years, 78 percent of black children are being raised in single-headed households. This is destruction personified. All right, let me see what other video I want. This is destruction personified. Okay, I'm showing you all. I'm letting you all know. Listen, man, it's by design. Okay, it's not a coincidence. Okay, no, you know I'm going to leave that there. I'm, I ain't going to show more videos on that. I got a couple more, but for time's sake. Now, for those of y'all, for those of y'all that's on on um welfare, okay, welfare. Once you go on welfare, automatically you know they go after the the the, the man and garnish his 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 paycheck or whatever. All you got to do is say that that man is is a baby father, even though he's not. But this is what I want you all to see. Welfare is a trap. Low-income housing is a trap. I was talking to this brother, was like, I think it was last year. You know, he living in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, Bronxville, in the projects. So, you know, this dude used to work with me and stuff like that. So I'm like, bro, why you ain't try to get a house or some? He said, he said, anytime, why you can't try to get a better job? Dude said, yo, if I get a better job, the more money I make, the more money I got to pay in rent. So I'm like, so it's like a trap. So low-income housing, in order to live in a low-income housing, you have to have a low income. If your income raise, it's like you're paying the same amount of money like anybody else. So because of that, I'm going to show you the trap. So because of that, guess what people don't do? They don't work. You understand? You're not going to work. And I know this for sure because my aunt was on Section 8. She couldn't get a, she make, if she working, guess what she work? Off the books. You understand? She working off the books and stuff. She ain't, she ain't trying to better herself in a standpoint of trying to get uh, 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 some kind of big job or something like that because guess what? Her rent is like three grand a month and the government paying it. You all understand? So what that bill, it bill a society of lazy people. You all understand? So when, when Benjamin and people from other countries come here, 
They come here and say, yo, Judah lazy. Judah don't want to work. Why Judah? But they don't understand the traps that set up here. They don't understand the reason why Judah is the way all they are. It's by social engineering. So all these, you got people that, guess what? They, just, they can't wait for the sixth of every month. That's when the welfare check come. You know, yo, I'm going to give you some, the sixth of every man, every month. Yo, our babe, let me give you, I'll give you, let me get half, half, man. I give you half food stamp, you give me half cash. You understand? It's some, there is some brothers and sisters that, that's how they live. They live off of public assistance. Okay, public assistance make you weak where you don't want, you don't want to go get a job. You understand? You're not going to go get a job because... Because why? Because if you get a job, they're going to cut off the public assistance. You know, now, them brothers had put a, a sister. There's a brother and a sister in one of the schools. The sister been on Section 8 a whole life. You know? But she, she, with a, she with a brother. She and the brother together. They've been together for 20 years. But guess what? The Section 8 is no man in the house rule. So... The brother and the sister, they ain't, they ain't marry on, on paperwork. You understand? So brothers wanted to kick them. Well, they didn't marry on paperwork. Da, 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 da. So I said, you know what? Let me talk to them and find out what's going on. You know, the brother said, the, get to find out the sister. The sister, um, she on Section 8. She said, I'm on Section 8. I ain't got a job. I have no skill. My husband ain't got no job. He ain't got no skill. The brother... If we get that done on paperwork, they're going to cut that off. You know, she's going to end up homeless. God, hey. You know, so I'm like, yo, you got to work that thing out, man. So I'm showing you all these things is trap. Okay, the Section 8, the public assistance. You know, as I said, I know people, that's how they live. They just live off of that. You feel what I'm saying? You all see what I'm saying? Read it again one more time. Verse 7. The instrument also of the churl are evil. He devised wicked devices. He devised, devised wicked devices. The public assistance and these programs that he got set up, it was not set up to help us. It was set up to divide the house. It was set up to, to, to make you woman independent. I don't need no man. I could do it by myself. Why? Because the, the government is taking care of me. I don't need you. Think about when the feminist movement start. It was in the 60s. In the 60s, women talking about they don't need a man. I could, do, I could do it by myself. Why? Because the government is their man. The government taking care of them. The government say, I'll pay your bills. I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay your rent. Okay? That's what starts separating the homes. <coughs> okay? So read it again. The instruments also of the churl are evil. Uh -huh. He devised wicked devices read on. to destroy the poor with lying words. To destroy the poor with lying words. Read on. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when we speak right. Those of us that speak in right. Read on. But the liberal devised liberal things. But, but the liberals, they devise liberal things. Lyndon B. Johnson, the civil rights movement. Oh, that civil rights bill <clears throat> that they devised it, that they devised it, the the WIC program, all of that in the sixties, all of that was to destroy the black household. Okay, all those liberal things is evil. The liberals gonna devise liberal things. Read on. And by liberal things shall he stand. Read on. Rise up, ye women, that are at ease. That's who is getting benefit from these liberal things. The black woman. Not the black man, the black woman. God says, rise up, you black woman. That's right. That these liberals have tricked you and fooled you. That are at ease. Why it's saying you are at ease? Because you are here at ease. You thinking everything is good. You're like, I don't need a man. The white man is giving me Section 8 food stamps. He's paying my rent. So he make you at ease. The scripture says, rise up, you woman that are at ease. Reason. Hear my voice. Hear God's voice. Listen to God. Stop listening to the white man. 
Read on. Ye careless daughters. You careless daughters. Read on. Give ear unto my speech. Read on. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail. The food stamp going cut off. Yes, sisters. You all better start getting off for it now. The food stamp going cut off. The section 8 is going to cut off. All these things is going to cut off. Now, listen, I, it doesn't, it, I'm not saying if you fall on hard times, you know, you go get some food stamps or whatever until you get back on your feet, anything wrong with it. But I'm showing you all why it was really set up. It was set up to destroy the black household. That was, that's why these things were set up. Okay, it was set up to keep our people in poverty. Okay, the low-income housing that they, that they see they set up all over America is to put a bunch of poor people together. And when poor people together, what do you think happened? Violence. All these projects. Why are you thinking all these projects is always violence and gangs? And why do you think is that? Is they are creating something. They are creating that situation. The projects there wasn't on low-income housing wasn't created to... to um, because they love black people. No. Low low income houses was created to keep crime on the rise. Okay? That's where low income housing was created. I want you all to understand that. Because the people that's living in the low income housing, guess what? It's people that's in poverty. Impoverished. And people that's impoverished, what's they going to do? They're going to rob. They're going to steal. They're going to sell drugs. You know what I mean? They're trying to get up out of that condition that they are in. Okay, now, so what? The vintage shall what? For the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. The gathering shall not come. Read on. Tremble, ye women. Tremble, ye women that's living here in America. Read on. That are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Ye careless ones. No, let me speed it up, man. Um, Isaiah 30 and, and 1. Isaiah chapter. You know what? I'm going to jump. Skip by a lot of things. You know what? Yes. No, go to Isaiah 30 and just jump to verse 12. Read that for me. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. Read on. And trust in oppression. And you trust in oppression. That's what we trust in. What's the oppression we trust in? The oppression we trust in is you trust in the Democrats, in these liberals. Right. But the things that they set up is really oppressing you. It's oppression. <laughs> got, get you, giving you low-income housing, got you living in the projects. That's <laughs> oppression. <laughs> but we trust in oppression. Okay, read on. Because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and you trust in perverseness read on and stay thereon and you stay in that sin read on therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach so from there go to isaiah isaiah 51 and 20. isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. Read thy sons have fainted thy sons have fainted the sons it's talking about the Israelites. The Bible says we have fainted. Read on. They lie at the head of all the streets. It says that we lie at the heads of all the streets. That's us hanging on these street corners. Read on. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. Why does it say in a net? What is the net? What is the trap? Huh? The traps is the policies that is put in place. Okay. The traps is the policies that they put in place. Now, let me see the videos that are, so they got the project set up, everybody outside chilling. Then they guess what? Do we got planes and boat to bring crack cocaine and coke in this country? And guns and all of that? No, we don't. But how these things end up in the black community? Where the coke come from? You know what I mean? There's a lot of the CIA they brought that they brought coke into the into the black into the community. You understand? How the hell Negroes know how to how to whip that stuff up and turn it into crack? Okay, how they know to make some so destructive and addictive? 
okay? It's by design. to this. That goes back to Genesis when it says that we turn in Judah, turn back into our old lion. It was all designed to destroy Judah. So read it again. They are like, what? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are like wild bull in a net. Read on. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The most I keep judging us. Read on. The rebuke of thy God. Read on. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken. So God is speaking to the Israelites. So the traps, the net is the trap that America got set up. Now I want you to go to, let me see the visuals that I got up there. Let me see the visuals that I got up there. I want you to see some of the traps that America got set up. Okay. Some of the traps. No, let me see the traps, the traps. I'll send some videos. I'm trying to find it. The traps that America got set up. The prison. I, I'm going to just say, I ain't see nothing there. The prison, the school to prison, that's a trap. Okay? The educational system, that's a trap. Okay? Because the educational system, they ain't teaching us. They teaching us to be subservient. Okay, so they got traps set up here in society to put us in prison. Okay, I'm telling you all. No, let me give an example. Like a lot of time, people say that they are, they are, um, we are free. We are not slaves no more. Okay, how much inside of you all think you are free? Okay. <laughs> Go to Isaiah 40 and 22. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. It is he that sit upon the circle of the earth, and the, the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. No, that's not what I wanted. We are in prison houses. Is that it? Is it 50? And... 22. Okay, 42 and 22. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. So I want you all to pay attention to what I read early on. It says we are like wild, we are like, we are like wild bull in a net. The net is the traps that set up here in society. The traps is, is them bringing drugs in the community them bringing guns in the community and we are in that poverty state and we taking up the guns, killing each other. We taking the, the drugs and selling it while, while they do what? They set up policies about war on drugs and guess what happened a lot of times? Brothers and sisters end up going to prison for 30, 40, 50 years. Okay, these are traps that Esau set up, that he got set up. And we like wild bulls out of, out of control getting caught up in these traps. Okay, you had the war on drugs. You all remember that? You had the tree strike on you out. You all remember that? If you get locked up three times, they put you in jail for the rest of your life. Who you think that affected? Our people. You understand? Our people that was affected. That wasn't affected on everybody. Okay? No. I don't want that. That was, that's not the one I wanted. It was another one. No, I want you all to see some. I want you to go to... Oh, no? I read that for me. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. So the Bible said this is a people robbed and spoiled. Read on. They are, they are all of them snared in holes. We all are snared in holes. Snared in holes. Read on. And they are hid in prison houses. So this is twofold. Them holes is literally talking about these holes, these holes in the walls that they put us as prisoners. And the prison houses is also talking about the land of our captivity. All these lands that we are in, guess what? These prison houses. America. Where you in, where are you in America? London. Um, the Caribbean islands. Those places is places we were taken as prisoners of war. <laughs> Hope you all understand. We are prisoners of war. There is a war between good and evil. We are the children of Israel. 
these lands that we was made slaves and put in is be is because of war. We are this prisoners of war, brothers. All right, they enslaved us. They took our nationality from us. They destroyed us. Okay, it was is war. Remember in Isaiah eighty three. It says, for lo, thy enemies made a tumult, and they took counsel against thy people. Who is God's people? The Israelites. What counsel they took to enslave us and scatter us through the four corners of the earth and take our identity. Okay, now, read that again. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Read on. They are all of them snared in holes. They are snared in holes. Read on. And they are hid in prison houses. We are hid in prison houses. We are snared in holes and we are hid in prison houses. Read on. Ooh. They are for a prey. We are for a prey. The nations, they prey on us. Read on. And none delivereth. And nobody deliver us. Read on. For a spoil and none saith restore. And nobody said restore these people. Restore them their identity that they are the children of Israel. Okay, restore these people. Nobody's saying restore them. Okay, from there, I want you to I'll send you an image, the 13th Amendment. You got that? Huh? 13th Amendment. If you ain't get that, from there. Okay. Yeah. All right, so read that for me. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution provides that neither slave nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So what I want you all to see here, the slavery still exists. No, the 13th Amendment, did they really let us go to slavery? Are we really free? Because what they did, they said, you're not a slave no more except you commit a crime. And then they let go everybody from slavery, and then they set up laws, such as the vagrancy laws. If I ain't got nowhere to stay, guess what? I used to stay in your plantation. No, you, no, you, you let me go to slavery and I ain't got nowhere to stay. stay. So guess what? I ain't got nowhere to stay. So they said, no, you are vagrant. So we could enslave you. You know, you got to do two years a hard labor. You going and work on this plantation for two years because you is a vagrant. You all understand? And then there's all kind of laws and black codes they got set up. The prison industry was established when slavery was abolished. Okay? The prison industry is, is like a, is, is a substitute. For, it's a nice way to saying a slave. Instead of saying you are, you, are, you, are, you are a slave, they say you are a prisoner. Okay? That's why God says what? It says we prisoners, we are like prisoners hid in prison houses and holes. Okay? So slavery was not abolished. Let me get that in Isaiah 14 and 3 and 5. Um, okay, I'm not going to be able to finish this class. Okay. Isaiah 13. I should have got two readers, right? <laughs> Or is these dudes in the back there? Anyways, yeah. Isaiah, to Isaiah, read that for me. 14 and 3 and 5. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. And, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Verse 5. That's slavery. You all understand. Read verse 4. Verse 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. The meaning Babylon the great. Read on. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? How, has, how have America ceased? America is the oppressor. Okay, you all keep, our people are, are being oppressed here in America. And read on. The golden city ceased. So America is also referred to as the golden city. How is the golden city no more? Read on. The Lord had broken. 
The staff of the wicked. The staff of the wicked is America. God have broken their rulership. Read on. And the scepter of the rulers who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. That's five? That was five. five okay, jump to verse 17. Yes, sir. Verse 17. That made the world as a wilderness. Read on. And destroyed the cities thereof. That, and destroyed the cities thereof. Read on. That opened not the house of his prisoners. When is, so what did America do? What didn't America did? America did not open the house of his prisoners. Who is the prisoners? Us here in America. I tell That's you, we right. are prisoners. Okay? Now from there, go to Zechariah 9 and 12. So America did not open the open the what? The house of his prisoners. They say they emancipate us, but yet they put what? They put a clause in there. Stop the cap. Okay, they put a clause in there. They said, you're not a slave, but if you commit a crime, guess what? You could be a slave. So now they set up dumb, stupid laws. Oh, you walk, you cross the street right here, guess what? You could do five years for that. And they start enslaving back the population. Okay? That's what they do. Then they got the tree strike on you. You, you commit crime three times, you're in prison for the rest of your life. you gone. Okay? Only in America that happens. Read on. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold. Read on. Ye prisoners of hope. So we must turn to the stronghold. The stronghold is our God. We must turn to our God. Okay, that's our stronghold. Ye what? Ye prisoners of hope. The Bible says we are prisoners of hope. Because we are here in America. We are hope. We are hoping for things to get better. You are hoping that you might get reparations. You are hoping that they going to do right by you. That you, the oppression gonna stuff, stop. The white people gonna love you. You are here hoping. God call us the prisoners of hope. You understand? You hoping that things gonna get better. But let me tell you or something. Things is not gonna get better. And everything that is set up here was set up as to destroy you. Okay. Now, Lamentation four and seventeen. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. For us, our eyes are filled for our vain help. Okay, read on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. There is no nation that's going to save us from the condition that we are in. I hope you brothers and sisters understand that. The person that's going to save us is our king. All right? There will be no reparation. I want you all to understand that. We have been watching for America to save us. Oh, what, the civil rights? You know, you all go bow down and kiss Trump feet. You all kiss Biden feet. And you all thinking these people going to help you. You know, they're going to give you a crumb. Okay? You trusting in the shadow of Egypt. Okay? The Bible says we watch and we look for a nation that can save us. These people cannot save us. We are prisoners here, man. Okay, read on. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our right. days are fulfilled. All right, so from there. Now, go to Micah 2 and 1, 2 and 10. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So the Bible says, this is not your rest. America, read on. Because it is polluted. The Bible says America is polluted. Read on. It shall destroy you. And America shall destroy you. Okay? I want you all to understand that. The Bible says, this place is not our rest. It shall destroy us. Read on. Even with a sore destruction. Even with, with a sore destruction. That's that nuclear destruction that will take place in the future. Read on. If a man walk into the spirit and falsehood do lie. Because in this place is full, is full of falsehood and lies. Read on. Saying, 
I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. And that's what America did to us. America prophesied unto us strong drink and wine. You understand? So this is what I want you all to see. The scripture says what? Read it again from 10. Verse 10. Arise ye and depart. The Bible says to arise and depart. Read on. For this is not your rest. This place is not your rest. Read on. Because it is polluted. This place is polluted. Read on. It shall destroy you. And it's going to destroy us. America is polluted, brothers and sisters. And the Bible says it will destroy us. Okay? This place is not our rest. Why it says that it's, it's polluted and it will destroy us? Go to my, my, Malachi 1 and 4. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. So where, wherever Esau, Edom dwelleth, the Bible says they shall be called the border of wickedness. Meaning wickedness is done here. Okay, this is the border. Whatever wickedness you could think about, you could find it here. That's why the scripture said, this place is not your rest. It shall defile you. Okay, whatever wickedness you're thinking about, you're going to find it here in Babylon, in America. Okay? Wickedness like what? Go to Revelation 17 and 3 to 5. No, it's, it's just read verse 5. Revelation 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great, read on. The mother of harlots. Read on. And abominations of the earth. So in America, you're going to find what? Abominations. Whatever abomination you could think about, you're going to find it here in America. Okay, that's why the scripture says, this place is not our rest. It shall, it's going to defile us if we don't come out from her. Okay? What kind of abomination? I want you to go to Leviticus 18 and 22. Leviticus 18 verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind, it is abomination. Read that again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. So God says we shouldn't lie with mankind as with womankind. Read on. It is abomination. So a man shouldn't lie down with a man the way how we lie down with a woman. God says that's our abomination. So when it says that America is the abomination of the earth, guess what? What's taking place here in America? homosexuality okay now another scripture read um deuteronomy 22 and 5 deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination. For all that do so is abomination. So you dress as a man, you a man and you dress as a woman or a woman dressed as a man, that's an abomination. Guess where you're going to find that? Right here in America. Okay? I want you to go to Proverbs 20 and 10. Proverbs 28 and 9. Proverbs chapter 28 in verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So everybody that's praying here in America that doesn't keep God's laws, guess what? That's an abomination. Go to Proverbs 12 and 22. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 22. Lying lips are abomination. To the Lord, 
But they that deal truly are his delight. So when it says lying lips, when you call yourself Jews and you are not, that's what? That's lying lips. When you say Jesus Christ is a white man, that's what? That's lying lips. Okay, read it again. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. A lying lips, lying lips is our abomination unto God. Read on. But they that deal truly are his delight. No, Proverbs 20 and 10. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 10. Read diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike abomination. So the Lord. So when you falsifying the scales and balance and you rubbing and stealing from people, God says that's an abomination. Everything I just read there, all of that is done here where? Guess where? In America. Okay? No. No. Go back to Go back to um I ain't gonna go into the evil com you know what? Uh hold on. No, I am got to cut it short. What time it is? Yeah. Okay. Now, the American dream. The American dream, right? The American dream is only a dream if you are asleep. <laughs> you all understand that? That's the only time you could... The only time you can enjoy the American dream is if you are sleeping. Okay? I'm telling you all real talk. You know, I remember I, I came up, the, the second day I came to America, I came up here. And as I, as I tell you all, I had that American dream in my mind. I'm thinking America is paved with gold. I'm thinking this is the land of milk and honey. Now, I came up here the, 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 the second day. I said, let me go sightseeing. I walk. I'm walking down Schenectady in Brooklyn. Is a dude with a bullet hole in his head. What? Somebody got shot. And I'm like, damn, what the hell? I never saw nothing like that in my life. I came from a little island. Like, yo, what the hell is going on here? You know, so that was a shell shock. Like, damn. You know, then, 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 you know, um, I bought a bike, you know, I, you know, I went out, do, do my little hustling. I bought a, a stunt bike. I'm like 17, right? I went by the corner store to get some and I put the bike outside. I came outside. The bike was gone. I said, damn, <laughs> spent 350 for that bike. So I saw, I saw a dude out there. I said, yo, anybody I see with my bike, I done in them, yo. Bet I don't see nobody with my bike. So I'm walking around looking for my bike. I said, anybody I see with it, they get a mashup, yo. But I saw like 10 dudes came down the block and they, and they riding my bike and they watching me like this. You talk that sh You heard that shit you were talking you talk that. I'm like, I'm just watching. I'm like, you, you know, you have to choose your battle. You know, some crip dudes, they just, they, they riding with my bike. I'm watching me like, yeah, dude, you were talking that there. Yeah, I heard you looking for us. Like, what's up? I said, oh, man. So the American dream. Now, let me tell you all something. The American dream, a lot of people is dead following the American dream. I know a lot of brothers is in prison. A lot of brothers is deported. A lot of brothers is dead trying to obtain the American dream. Okay? Because as I said, the American dream is really a trap. Okay? That's why I say a lot of people come from the islands and they say, oh, if they would, if they were up here, they would have did this and did that. But they fall into that same trap that's set up here for Judah. And that trap is what? Prison, debt, projects, welfare. Y'all understand? Like the first generation, like somebody that come up here, the parents, like for myself, I came here from the islands. I might be a hard worker and stuff like that. But if I don't instill certain things in my kids, guess what? They're going to be lazy. 
they're going to fall into that trap. You understand? If I don't teach them right, okay, sometimes my kids are going to fall into that, to that trap if I ain't teach them right, okay? They get caught up in the prison system or get caught up in the drug system or get caught up in crime or whatever trying to chase that American dream. Whether they, you know, the credit, the scam, the credit card scammers, scammers or whatever. All of that is people trying to chase that American dream. Okay? But as I said, the American dream is only good if you are, you, you could only enjoy that to, if you are asleep. It's not real. Okay? Everybody, think about all, everybody you all, that you all knew. Think about it over these years that that claim to to got it or so forth if they end dead or they're in prison all drug dealers end up in prison i just want you all to know that <laughs> all drug dealers always go to prison all gangsters is either dead or in prison okay think i'm letting you all know okay so that that american dream you got to be asleep to enjoy it. And it's all built around traps. Okay? Now, I want you to go to Romans 13 and 11. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So you all see what the Lord tell us to do what? We have to awake out of sleep. So if we awake out of sleep, that means, that's why I tell you, you got to be asleep to enjoy the American dream. Okay? Because once you come into this truth and you start learning certain things, there's no way you, the thing, when you look in society, you like, you see the traps that is set up for us. Okay? You see it. Okay, read it again. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. So the Bible says we must be awake out of sleep. Okay, we should not be in that dead state no more. We should not be chasing that American dream. Okay, because that American dream is a nightmare. That American dream, you could only enjoy that if you were asleep. Some people might say, go back to your own country. Why why are you here? I know some of you know some people are like go back go back to your country. Listen, if I ain't had work to do here in Babylon, I would have go back to my country. You understand? But God have me here for a reason. If I didn't come here, I wouldn't have been here and I wouldn't have been teaching. I wouldn't have been Deacon Malachi. You understand? Ooh. So I'm thinking I'm coming up here for the American dream. The Lord said, No, 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 no. I'm sending you up there to learn this gospel. And to tear down Babylon. And then they're going to deport you. What right. the hell they want to do to you. No, I, you all laugh about serious. The government is going to get rid of me soon. I just want you all to know. You all don't be surprised. Whatever chump up charges they try putting on me or whatever. You understand? It is what it is. Okay? But read it again one more time. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time. To awake out of sleep. So it's high time to awake out of sleep. Okay? Read on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Our salvation, brothers and sisters, is nearer than we think. Read on. The night is far spent. We have been in slavery here for over 350 years. That's or even right. longer. Okay? The night have been far spent. Read on. The day is at hand. Christ is at hand. He is the day. Read on. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. We must cast off them works of darkness. Read on. And let us put on the armor of light. And let us put on the armor of light. That's Christ. Read on. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Okay, from there go to Ephesians 2 and 12. No, most of us, as I tell you all, I used to chase the American dream, man. You know, and the most had to shake me up some things I see. You know, one time I went on, they had me on Rikers. 
okay and i'm i'm seeing they chain me up chain up i'm like yo i'm not no like why they chain they have me chain my hands i'm out and when i go up there just brothers that look just like me up there i'm like yo you know i'm like why is it like yo like this is crazy you know those are the traps that we got caught up in. You know what I mean? I wanted to touch on the music thing, how the music, the hip-hop music, how it was hijacked, and how the music have a role to even play with the crime and the, the crime and all, every, all this evil that you see going on in our community. You know, but I'm not going to be able to get, I'm not going to have time to touch on that today. You know? Yeah, but um, I remember when I was young, you know, the first rapper I started listening to was DMX. You know, I saw that um that video. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Stop, drop, shut him down. You know, so I'm like, yo, I saw it to put a spirit on me. I had the chain. I started tearing off all my shirt sleeve. I balled my head. I was like 16. I'm like, yo, I thought I was, you know what I mean? All the CDs I get, I'm like 16 in high school. I'm like, okay. You know, then I came up here and I started listening 50 cents when that when he dropped that album, Get Rich Out Die Trying. And them music I used to listen to influenced me and influenced the way how I think. And I got caught up in the traps. The traps that Esau got set up for Judah, I got caught up in it. You know, now I start thinking like 50. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna get rich or I'm gonna die trying. You understand? And that's how that's how you think out there, you know what I mean? You got brothers out there, that's how they think. They like, yo, I got to do what I got to do to survive. That's how, I, that's how my mind is. I don't care about what you what, what you going to do for me, what you going to do to help me, what that Bible could do for me. You understand? Okay, that's how some brothers think. That's why the scripture says some of us is without hope. Did you read that? No, read that. Ephesians 2 and 12. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. That at the, that at the time... Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We don't. And strangers from the covenant of promise. We don't. Having no hope. Having what? No hope. A lot of us had no hope. You understand? A lot of us had no hope. I don't know about you all, but I was without hope one point of time. Well, you know, one point of time I was without hope. I didn't care if I live or die. It was whatever. You understand? I got caught up in the same trap that. A lot of brothers got caught up in following the American dream. You understand? A lot of we, a lot of brothers and sisters got caught up in, and was either debt or prison. You understand? That's, you know, when you listen to stuff like, you know, the, you know I don't know if you all heard Fifty album, man, but yo, dude, people take them things serious. That's why the scripture says, "Evil communication it will defile you. It will defile you." You know what I mean? Because you listen to these dudes and you listen to the music and the things they're saying and you like, yo, to hell with that. It put a spirit on you. Okay? Now, um, read it again one more read it again one more time. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Read on. And strangers from the covenant of promise. And we were strangers from the covenant of promise. We were strangers. Okay? Strangers from the covenant of promise. Read on. Having no hope. And we had no hope. Read on. And without God in the world. And we were without God in the world. We had no hope. Okay. That's how a lot of brothers is right now and sisters is out there. You got sisters prostituting. You got people living a messed up life out there. And they don't care. Why? Because they are without hope. They are caught. They are like wild bull in that net. In that trap in society. All them traps that were set up by these liberals, okay? And there's many traps. There's many traps you could fall into. You could fall into the trap of being a, a homosexual. You understand? You could fall into the trap because there's traps that set up to turn your kids into homos. And, no, I shouldn't say homos. <laughs> into chichi man, you understand? Okay, it's traps they got set up. For, for all of you all. I just want you all to know. Okay, whatever you like, that he, they got traps set up for you. Okay, that's why the scripture says the liberal things and the things that they devise is, is vile. You sisters got that independent spirit, don't worry. They got traps set up for you. Now when you got old, you talking about, 
I should have never left my husband. I should have never divorced my husband. No, I'm old and lonely. Okay, I wanted to be independent. Okay? Now, anyways. Now, let me just read two more scriptures and I'm going to shut it down. Go to Revelation 18 and 4. And Jeremiah 51 and 6. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins. So God command us to come out of her. The her here is Babylon and the lies and all of that. Don't follow the American dream. Stop trying to chase that American dream. Come out from her, my people. Read on. And, and that ye be not partakers of her sins. To, to come out of her meaning don't take parts in the sins here in America. The sins is the abominations. Okay, don't take part in the abominations here. Read on. And that ye receive not of her plagues. And that if you do, you're going to receive of the plagues that's coming here to America. Okay, from there, go to Jeremiah 51 and 6. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. So the Bible says flee out of the midst of Babylon. Read on. And deliver every man his soul. And the Bible says we all got to deliver our souls. That's, how, that's what we're delivering from here, you know. I want you all to understand is your soul. Your soul. Your soul. The Babylon here is not talking about ancient Babylon. It's talking about America. The Bible says what? Read it again. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Read on. And deliver every man his soul. And that's what we got to deliver. How do you deliver your soul? Okay, you deliver your soul by not being caught up in the sins here in America. Okay, that's how you deliver your soul. Okay, because guess what? This place, Babylon, you could become rich. You could... um. You could become rich. You could get anything you want here in Babylon, but it comes with a price. Okay? It comes with a price. Let me get, um, let me see what I want. One more scripture. Damn, I didn't write it down. Yeah. You could become rich here in America. You could get anything you want here in America, but it comes with a price. It comes with a price. All right, you got it? Yes, sir. Okay, read that for me. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. Okay. For, what, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? So you could gain the whole world, brothers and sisters. You could gain the world. You could be whatever. You could live the American dream and gain this world. Okay? You could become super rich like, like Diddy. Yeah. Diddy is a billionaire. Okay? You could gain the world, but guess what? We don't. And lose his own soul. But you could end up losing your soul. Okay? The R. Kelly. You see what happened to R. Kelly? Okay, all of these celebrities that you look up to, all these people that you look up to, they have gained the world, but guess what? They have lost their soul. Jeremiah 51 and 6, it says what? It says, deliver every man his soul. Flee out of Babylon right. and deliver every man his soul. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, I hope you all got some out of that topic I went over. Y'all don't get caught up in the chop saying society. With that, it's up can I coming up next. Y'all stay tuned. Lord's will. You're done now. <laughs>